Hey guys, this is Faye from Shangli Art. I also have another YouTube channel called Faye's World of Media. For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm the daughter of Shangli, and I'm really proud to have started this channel. I'm not acting alone. My content manager, Anna, has been a huge help. And I just want to welcome you guys officially. This is the, really the first time for us to show our faces and to introduce you to this very channel. If you have any thoughts, feedback, please let us know in the comments below. We're always looking forward to new ways of creating content, engaging with our audience. But this video is gonna be a little bit different. It's about NFT for artists. You see the look on my face because I really didn't know how to bring this topic forward. It's something that I've been trying to learn and explore on my own. And when going through a lot of these YouTube channels and videos, I just wasn't sure if there's like authoritative or like really comprehensive content. There's some good ones out there, but we're trying to tread very lightly and be very careful. So instead of, for instance, encouraging my mom, who's a traditional artist to just rush right into NFT, it didn't make sense. And I really didn't, and I still don't know a whole lot about it. So I decided to invite Anne Spalter, who is a, uh, a digital artist and who has been in this field for a long time, for decades. In fact, she is the one who created the first official digital art uh, textbook uh, for RISD, so Rhode Island School of Design. And we had this really relaxing and kind of, you know, really it's a conversation among friends to talk about NFT. Anne has really more than dipped her toes into NFT. She has sold works um, that are uh, NFT digital arts. So I just, didn't know, and frankly, I was so surprised and delighted by this conversation. Someone who's not rushing me, trying to convince me to step into something that I'm uncomfortable with, but instead she offered tremendous amount of value without rushing into any concepts. Instead, she has provided us in this video, in this conversation, all the resources and tools that are available to us. Even beyond NFT, how do we explore digital arts in general? How do we create digital arts right now on the internet today without having to hire someone tens of thousands of dollars to do it? It is very much learnable, adaptable. So I really can't wait to see the feedback and learnings from this conversation. And I want to really share it with you guys. Um, so that's it. I hope you enjoy and let us know what else you would like to learn. Thanks so much. Yeah, I was just going to ask, do you get involved in any of the sort of, if you buy this NFT, you have this experience with me, like interaction or anything like that, or it's all the actual object? I usually reach out actually to people that purchase the NFT. Sometimes you can't tell who they are. Mm. You know, there's a lot of anonymous stuff or they're they're on, um, you know, super rare, but they're not on Twitter in a way that I can track down. So sometimes I don't know who bought them, but if I can connect the dots, then I always reach out and see if they want to have a print that goes with the NFT or just, you know, tell them thanks for collecting artwork. Mm -hmm. And that's been really nice to just have direct interaction with the collectors. Mm, cool. Because actually been, they're super enthusiastic about the whole space. Mm. So it's a very positive thing. Yeah. So, and I know that, should I say that you're also relatively new in NFT art or have you been in it for like a couple of years? Um, I've been in it since, um, I think September of 2020. Oh, okay. Which is a long time for NFT art, even though it's not <laughs> That's true. a short period of time in general. I was even thinking like, is there two years even possible? Like has it, has the NFT been even around or open to the public yeah, for two years? Yeah, they've been around since 2017, okay. you know, like cyberpunks, I think, or maybe even 2016 and they were um, Bitcoin mm -hmm. NFTs. Wow. And obviously this is like one of your income, not even just income streams. This is like one ways for you to engage with your audience, like you said earlier uh these audiences like who people who come visit you at a gallery versus who people who buy prints or your other artworks or installations versus nft art they're all very very separate audiences so the way i look at it it's not about i think if i'm hearing it correctly is like you don't have to be an artist to only think about in fact you shouldn't be only thinking about nft and nft alone you should definitely explore other routes of exposing your art to like a larger community right um, yeah, I mean, it depends what your goals are. Also, I just want to correct because I said cyberpunk and they're crypto punks and they did come out in 2017. So mm. they've been around for a while. Um, 
I mean, some people have come into themselves as artists through NFTs and they're not really looking mm -hmm. for other things like a, mm -hmm. more traditional collecting environments because they've done fantastically well mm -hmm. in the right. NFT world. I think because I was already in the more traditional art world, you know, that I've been pursuing both, but it wasn't like, oh, wow, I've sold some NFTs. Now I'm going to abandon the whole rest of, you know, the art experience in our world collecting and showing the experience so you know i'm trying to mm -hmm. do both yeah that's really interesting because there may be i'm not saying all the young kids but there they are literally artists who are entering into the art world directly through nft and this is they they've been very successful like why are they even looking elsewhere whereas i think yeah. mo right I mean, a lot are not because they mm -hmm. have been very successful and i think one of the positive things about it is that it attracted a lot of people to be creative you know, I try to sell their creative product that wouldn't have done that otherwise. And that was a sort of combination of the NFT platforms and the, the pandemic because mm -hmm. everyone was stuck at home. And yeah, so yeah. I mean, I think that's great. You know, as a, a teacher for a long time, it's wonderful to see people doing something creative and getting great feedback and even making money doing it. It's really awesome. Mm. I have so many questions, but Adam, feel free to jump in because I'm thinking like for you and you are a you're an established artist uh you know we're, we're all of us are on some sort of a spectrum in terms of like you know where we think we stand in the art world so um you know definitely want to uh we, we've shared your work with our friends and we we talk about you very often and um so like how does some how should someone be thinking about nft uh, for them as a route of either building an audience or making money because I think people have trouble, including myself, difficulties in translating between the all the different units of money or different types of, I, I really try to avoid to say those words, um, uh, and, uh, and then having the Coinbase wallet and then try, is that even like how, you know, what's the question from us? Like, on average, right? Like if people are working hard, dedicated, like what, what is the, what are the possibilities and, um, in terms of like income and like pricing their artworks? Um, I think it's so variable. It would be hard if you just say like a random person to predict mm -hmm. what might happen from what I've seen people who are making really good artwork and get on a major platform or get an audience through interacting with people on Twitter, they've done really well. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, there's tons of people that have not sold NFTs. And an article came out a while ago that you know, pointed out you could actually lose money mm -hmm. making mm -hmm. NFTs because you have to pay to mint them. And... Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's variable, but I definitely, I don't know if my feed is you know biased, but it seems like a lot of people are doing well. and. Pretty much every day I see something on Twitter where someone says, oh, I, I paid off my parents' mortgage, I paid off my mm -hmm. student debt, and um, mm -hmm. you definitely don't hear that in the regular art world, you know, which is more on Instagram <laughs> than Twitter. I, I've never seen anyone, I've never seen someone say, oh, I had a solo show and now I paid off all my debt. Like, there's just, unless you're at a very high level in the traditional art world, it's really hard to make a substantial amount of money, as far as mm -hmm. I can tell. Even if it is survivor bias, like you say, it still wouldn't be a thing. Literally never yeah, heard I mean, somebody say that. I never saw that, that before mm -hmm. in the art community. So many people posting that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's nice. It's nice to think like, wow, you could make a living. Yeah. Doing artwork and doing your creative, you know, visual or audio thing. As far as, far as stuff that people have been either suspicious of or, or questioned, and this isn't you, this is the whole maybe industry, but your thoughts on the whole environmental impact and energy use, is that real? Is that overblown? Is it getting better? Do you have any perspective on when people say, oh, it uses so much energy? How do you feel yeah, about that? I mean, you can always mint on a, a chain like the Tezos blockchain, you know, or Polygon or something where the energy thing is not an issue at all. I think it's difficult to, um, to compare making an NFT actually with other forms of artwork. I've done huge installations sent things in crates that then I have to throw out there. There's colossal waste in regular art as well. It's just no one wrote an easy to understand article about it. Mm -hmm. And I did have people send me kind of like hate messages, you know, how dare you, you're, you're ruining the environment. And, you know, like if you care about the environment, become vegan, 
-hmm. that's going to actually make an impact, not whether you make an NFT or not. Yeah, I hear you. That was the kind of perspective I was curious about. Mm. And like, I haven't really looked closely enough. It seems just to me, someone who's literally in it for two weeks, I see all the NFT arts to be, uh, like you said, um, kind of what was the word that you used earlier as a specific theme, right? I see a lot of like, uh, kind of the, what are you like digital bears in general, but there are a lot of digital, uh, kind of emoji like, and very, very abstract, uh, type of artworks. Like you said, there are some animations involved, movements involved, like it, that's pretty much it. Like I have not seen there's much of a variety to NFT art. I could be looking in all the wrong places. Like what, what's your take on it's that? Hard. I think there's so much stuff out there, mm -hmm. but there's really great art. I mean, it's sort of like the regular art world. You go to a bunch of galleries or you do a studio visits in an area and some of it's not that exciting to you. And some of it's really impressive. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure it's all that different. Maybe the, the threshold is so low that more people are, you know, posting things than you would see, you know, walking around galleries in Chelsea or something. So could, could it be I that like so? A lot of great stuff out there. It's like we see the bored apes and the other apes and the like facing the bears. And if you're just yeah. reading how-to articles, maybe the I don't know yacht club apes or what you're going to run into. But that's really yeah. just I mean, currency a versus art. Collectibles thing, which I did not really understand at all. I mean, it didn't appeal. None of them basically have appealed to me aesthetically, except maybe one artist I know who's an AI artist who's doing great stuff. But, um, you know, all those board ape things, like I'm, I'm not going to pay any money ever for a board ape, you know, Be and I think that's just my, my traditional art background, but, um, collectibles are huge in the NFT space and people love them and it comes like part of their identity and they use it as their Twitter profile. And, mm -hmm. and, um, it's all about the rarities in the collection and people try to get ones that are rare and keep them or resell them. It's a whole really different world. Which maybe if I'd been into collecting like baseball cards or, you know, the traditional collectibles that I think have parallels mm -hmm. that I just knew nothing about. Makes sense. So what are it's, it's a very different approach to collecting. Right. Uh, say somebody who is not a collector or a collector of traditional board apes uh, sort of thing. Like, uh, do you know anything? Uh, do you know much about your audience that we did talk about before we hit record, actually? Um, like more about who they are and what they're doing with the artworks. Oh, you know, what, what are they using it for? Um, they're mostly people who've made money in crypto mm. and don't have traditional art, you know, training or background, but have mm. discovered the NFT world and gotten really excited about it. Mm. And they work on building up these beautiful collections and they have things like that on cyber.io. They, they make virtual spaces and, and hang mm. the works and, um, hmm. they're just as enthusiastic as a traditional art collector and they become knowledgeable through doing it just like traditional art collecting. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, sometimes they get put down or there's a feeling that it's, you know, so separate and people don't really know and they're buying whatever the apes or whatever, but, um, within that environment they they become, you know, skilled and have created these amazing collections that have gone mm -hmm. up in value tremendously. Oh, wow. Now, and some people are just, you know, collecting things that they like and it might not go up in value, but you have this really cool way to collect artwork mm -hmm. that you can see wherever you are and you don't have to deal with shipping and insurance and customs and have space, you know, to store a lot of things. And mm. So I think it's very, you know, like 2021, 20, 2022, 20, people are working remotely and they're traveling around and it makes mm -hmm. sense to have the artwork be more virtual. Mm. You know, I don't know, a lot of people in New York gave up their apartments and moved around and apartments in New York are small anyway. So mm -hmm. having like a hundred artworks in your apartment would be really problematic, but it's not in the NFT world. Wow. I, yeah, I mean, it just like, it's challenging me to really rethink about the art world in general. Like one example would be like, I used to be a, I mean, still is sort of a lifelong goal. And that's changing like for my mom to be like building a museum local museum i think about like how it could be my legacy i literally even started a a trust a trust fund for myself and like how i plan on this and all of a sudden just two nights ago i said mom come over here this is like nft digital gallery 
and we're browsing around i said look this is one room this room like based on you know there's dimensionless and you can build as many rooms as possible you can walk into this gallery um and then have one collection of yours be displayed here then you can you can build the entire experience and you can walk people over there it's going to be artworks you've done in 1985 and she was like it's the funny thing is like my mom is again turning 70 next year she's like she totally gets it she doesn't know how to get it done but she gets excited thinking about like we're no longer constrained by a physical yeah. space you know waiting to make a million dollars to pay rent somewhere to have your art display for six you know three months so i'm gonna check this one out as well is it is it kunst matrix kunst matrix that's kunst german Oh. So it's, um, these are ones where you don't have to buy land, you know, because like cyber voxels, you spend like, you know, like forty thousand dollars or something to buy land. It's crazy. So wow. these are just more three D display environments, but mm -hmm. they can be endless, and they're not that mm -hmm. expensive. Wow. And if you go on one of these spaces, can you undo? It's like if you pick one and you display your art and you change your mind later, can you pull it out and put it somewhere yeah. else? Yeah, yeah, of course. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. exactly. That's a great question, Adam, because you can literally replicate those. Again, like we said, there's a difference between minted uh, NFT somewhere and that that collection can be repurposed elsewhere as well. Right. Like in a uh, in, in a in a way that we're having trouble describing it. It's like all new vocabulary here. But um, you can literally have open sea gallery displayed on spatial.io, but then you can rebuilt this somehow and the and, and Anne, am i correct like a lot of these collections like the you know cons matrix or like cyber on cyber.io these do all these artworks need to be minted or do they have to be hosted somewhere like open sea or no they can be they do not um yeah. i'm sending you another one where things do have to be minted i believe lazy oh com. interesting you, you can it. literally just upload them then right like it did you, it yeah, you be like jpeg image you know or take a photo Mm -hmm. Or you get it to be digital, oh and then you can God. hang it in a gallery in Kunst Matrix and have people come in and see it. And... Wow. If it's an NFT, you could have it linked through to the mm -hmm. NFT link, but yeah, you can just show anything. These are awesome. Do you ever do video as well? or? I do. I mean, I think it's nice. It's also great for digital artists who have been really restricted by things in the real world and for I've made video art for a long time it's extremely hard to sell video art mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but um in the nft world it's a natural environment for video and multimedia you know sound and mm -hmm. everything to be combined with each other because it is a digital platform mm. so it's just as easy to make a video nft as a still nft so if it, maybe like the and painting and then mom the painting it and then mom teaching yeah. it yeah. And then you teaching it in English. Yeah. Yeah. You could um, get, combine it with some didactic thing or do like a um, time lapse of it being created. And yeah, yeah, time lapse. Yeah. Those that like we that have. As well. So they get, you know, extra value. Yeah. That's really interesting. Like that reminds me of some that I feel like we haven't walked into a modern uh, museum with you, and but like separately, like we've done that so many different times, different ways. And sometimes I get. I realize the things that used to annoy me now are making sense in NFT world, such as we we saw like it was a basically a film, but there was like this screen, like a water, like a fountain, a fountain, you know, basically like a fountain. And that's kind of like changing how you're seeing the video behind the fountain. It's hard to describe, but then you have to walk through it. And that, that I don't know, I remember that moment of you're like, then you can walk by them. And I remember sitting like, so I'm now vertical towards a, you know, the, the streams of water. Then you see to your right, like people watching to your left, the video itself, but there's a very transformative. So all those experiences can be interpreted, kind of rebuilt using multimedia for NFT too, right? Like, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's going to replace the mm. physical art world. And I think there'll be more and more combinations of digital and physical people call mm. it digital. Digital, I like that. Digital, yeah. Yeah. So that you could have both if you want. What software yeah, do I've you use? I've yeah. to collectors who have said no, they just, they don't collect physical art. Oh, that, that's interesting. So, 
Yeah. You know, and I, I would love to not forget and ask you maybe some of the software tools that you use to to translate and transform your artworks. Um, but before that, I, you know, like you said, I realized that, you know, we want to get in just a little bit early. I mean, right now it's not super duper early, but it's still relatively early. Like who knows, maybe there are younger Asian people, Asian business people, collectors who want to re-envision like traditional Chinese art and mom skills and like whole generation are dying, like in, in a way that many of them are living, but not even working or won't be able to work anymore. So I feel like we, we want to be ready. So when those people are ready, the next generation they want to purchase, the work is already there, you know, as opposed yeah. to, yeah, there's like no competition really right cool. now. I have no idea, you know, how to get the typical NFT collector interested in that. But, mm -hmm. you know, I think the images are amazing that your mom creates. So it could definitely happen. Yeah. And like you said, I, I think I want to kind of transform it. I think I want to change it into something else. Like, because, you know, in a, I'm not very, very experienced, but a lot of what she does, right? Like it's relying on the, the quality of the camera, how big, like how stretched out these paintings could be like, but maybe it's about, you know, using vectors or other ways to manipulate it or, you know, change it into something a little bit different uh, as opposed to just a static image. So um, there are tools, by the way, I I've noticed like very, very basic. You could literally, there are mobile apps that you pay $5. You can even use it for free where like mom does a lot of figures, uh, like portraits, and you can literally make people's hair flow uh, just in it's like a, in a really natural way where if this woman is wearing a dress or something, you can make the dress kind of be like flowing and it just everything static, but there's elements that look real. Like you can picture yourself in it. So I think I can explore something like that. I just, I still don't see, and I could be wrong. I don't see uh, a way for people to be interested or excited about her, like, or a static work only. Maybe they are, but I just feel like NFT is too, I need, we need to bridge that gap somehow. Like yeah, her work is maybe, nice yeah. For it to take advantage of the new environment. Mm, right. And I think people are attracted to something that would exist there and would be hard to exist in the physical world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, I mean, I've sold still images as well, but all my work's created digitally. So I think it's a different situation. Like, yeah. I'm not selling like a scan of a painting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That That's what I was trying to say. I'm, I don't think the scan of a painting is quite the right way to go. Uh, m maybe, I mean, frankly, for NFT, it's not, but I might just do that for some digital gallery for fun. You know, not everything in the gallery has to move necessarily. Um, but what are some of the, the tools and you're using to to create your <laughs> original uh original art like uh what are oh, some of the tools they're no versus... different than the tools i was using before which is mostly adobe creative suite you know after effects photoshop okay um and i've been doing a bunch of ai stuff so that is different and I've been using a platform called Playform.io. Playform? In the chat, yeah. Playform. Uh -huh. And another one called Night Cafe. Oh my God. Okay. This is, you know, I feel like Creator. we're going to create, we are in the middle of creating the most popular like YouTube video and um, like a blog post that's going to get all the, you know, NFT for artists. So, so given that that's the case, uh, my next question. So, I, without giving away the year, I will say I'm friends with Anne since high school, and much as I'm trading many on that years ago. many, let's just say lots, many, as the saying goes. That said, and we're kind of benefiting from that to ask you all these questions, for precise and and big picture. Maybe take a moment before we start to run out of time, telling us about your work, who, who wants to meet you, who wants to, who's been attracted to your work. So mm. if, uh, if this gets out on the phase world platform, we can meet some people for you too. Um, I mean, you can look, most of my NFTs, they're on super rare. I'll put my thing in there. Yeah. And so you, the cool thing about the NFT world, unlike the regular art world is you can see Everything is transparent. You can see who bought what and when and for what price, mm -hmm. um, which is very different, very, very different from the regular art world mm -hmm. where that information is very um, 
protected mm-hmm. most of the time, not mm-hmm. something you can easily access. So if you look at my super website, you can see everyone who bought things and click on them and see who they are. Mm-hmm. Um, usually their super rare name corresponds to a Twitter name. Mm-hmm. Um, that explains all the ETH, ETH Twitter names I've been seeing. I didn't yeah. know what that was. Yeah. You also mentioned, uh, no, this is really cool. I'm um, collect. You also mentioned a Twitter as a really interesting platform where a lot of the conversations, even sales are happening right now. Do you think Twitter is uniquely positioned for that? Or, or, or maybe you are more active on Twitter. Are there any other no, relevant? I, had, um, I was, I mean, I had a Twitter account, but I literally never went on it. I was on Instagram because that's where the traditional art world is. Mm-hmm. And all the NFT stuff is on Twitter. So That's I had to so go funny. on Twitter and start posting everything I post on Instagram. I would also post on Twitter and yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I at least for now, in the Twitter world. Wow. By the and way, I don't know. Can't... I think it's just random that that's where the people ended up. But do you happen to see the, do you think they're most of them are rather young or they're all over like twenties, thirties, all the way to who uh, knows? Yeah. A whole range of ages. I would say mostly on the younger side and male, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but um, that's just the crypto world. Yeah. You mentioned, actually, I, I had a follow-up question about, yeah, like Adobe Suite and all that Photoshop. Uh, you said you're starting to use new AI tools for NFT art. Uh, what are some of those tools? That I put them in the chat, oh. Playform.io and then Night Cafe. Oh, creator. Oh. I didn't, this is the discount. I was like, oh, I didn't even know that those are tools. I thought those are like another NFT gallery or community or something. There are um, websites where you can use AI without having to code anything. Oh and my I've God. I've also been working with someone to create a more custom AI pipeline because he knows Python and, you mm-hmm. know, could adjust things for me that I can't do directly on those platforms. This is perfect. I mean, I'm looking at this. It's like, oh, you can create something directly from an image, which is something I can literally drag in my mom's artwork and it's going to create these variations, which yeah. leads to a really like educational question for me. I heard that if you want to be successful as an NFT artist, you cannot just have like, it's a twofold question, but I'll start with the first one. You can't just have like one unique image. You need to have a collection of something like thousands or tens of thousands of images or products is that true or do you feel like that's total I mean, bogus I, I haven't done that mm-hmm. so a lot of people do create collections and i am working on one that hopefully mm-hmm. will be around in late february yeah but that as i said that's like a whole new world for me yeah the idea of like a collectibles thing and assigning traits to the different images so people can calculate which one is rare oh my god you know, to me i only collect artwork by what it looks like yeah so yeah the idea that there's this whole other like calculus behind the collecting is definitely been new for me yeah i i heard and i could barely comprehend what was being talked about but i think my uh, what i'm hearing is like you you drop you feed in one image you press one button of some sort all of a sudden you get like a thousand ten thousand variations from that painting is that what we're talking about and or something um, a little different? Well, that would be like generative art so there's generative art blocks I don't know mm-hmm. if you looked at art blocks. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm on their curatorial <laughs> board and they've done incredibly well. Mm-hmm. They um, they do artwork that's created generatively. Usually the artists are using processing, but a code that runs in a browser. Mm-hmm. And when you mint it, that is when the piece is created. Gotcha. So it's like a cool kind of art vending machine. Oh my goodness. That's crazy. It's this really is fun. so With the educational. AI thing, they're they're pre-made because they take a lot longer to create. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. they're not gonna get minted in real time. And not all of them turn out well. So mm-hmm. I mean it's it's also a challenge to make something generatively there. You make five hundred or a thousand and they all look good. It's yeah, yeah, no kidding. Right? Programming challenge. Yeah, you get five. You're like, oh I waste it all the time. Yeah, that's, that's just... true for, for AI as well. Sometimes you have like a thing that a whole bunch of them look good and then some don't. Mm. Which is weird because it's almost like a flashback to taking film pictures. That's just as a regular person, you know, we do the France strip in Commonwealth and I, I have two, one of John Lathan and like one of, you know, Bob or whoever that look awesome. And the other 32 were terrible. 
<laughs> so it's almost like to get your film back, like going full circle back from, from yeah. film yeah. to digital to film. Yeah, it's developing through the code. Yeah. Wow. Oh, uh, I, I mean, we... Um, oh, I don't, you don't have to, to answer that, though. You don't need to have a, a collectibles thing or do a drop of 500 pieces to be successful. And a lot of artists just do one of one or, you yeah. know, small series of things. Cool. Oh my goodness, we, we're gonna follow your February launch. Anything that you have planned out for that collection that people should know about or where to find it, where to buy it? Um, I've had some issues with the platform that's supposed to be doing it. So I'm yeah. not 100% sure it's gonna happen on that platform. Mm -hmm. But I can send you the information when it's like right. yeah. more confirmed. It's gonna happen. Yeah. And it's a series of all different kinds of spaceships with sort of a cool sci-fi narrative and they're all generated with AI. Yeah. And a few of them are animated as well. So but cool. I'm not a hundred percent sure which, which platform it's going to be through. Are, cool. are, I mean, how much time are you building NFT art versus your traditional art? Like how are you balancing your career in that sense? Um, it's, I guess it's hard to say like in a given week, how much time is in each one. It sort of depends on what's happening. I was in um, an art fair in New York and that was all physical mm -hmm. artwork. You know, I created it with AI, but it was all physical. And I'm in some upcoming shows that are, have big physical objects in them, huge inflatables and things. But mm -hmm. I would say they're all related. You know, like it's all part of the same theme and part of the same creative process. And then whether it ends up as an NFT or a sculpture or a painting or pastel drawing, mm -hmm. and if it just depends on the piece and the venue that it's mm -hmm. going to be in. Oh my goodness, so cool. Have you, last yeah. question. I, I know, are you still teaching art? Uh, I have not taught full time since uh, 2008, I think. Oh, okay, and even gotcha. I, was, I was adjunct. So, but since 2009, I've just been doing my artwork full time, which is really, you know, a luxury and quite wonderful. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, I do a lot of lectures. Mm -hmm. I lectured at Christie's and Sotheby's in their education arms. And I have a show at um, Grinnell College Museum of Art. So I'm going to, you know, go give an artist talk. And mm -hmm. so in, involved, but not like every Tuesday and Thursday, 9 a.m. Yeah, right. Then it's Very much better that way. Do you see a lot of enthusiasm or like um, from from schools or educational institutions about NFT or even starting that conversation just yet? Is it too early for them? Um, some are definitely more advanced with mm -hmm. that than others, mm -hmm. depending on how kind of conservative the school is. Mm -hmm. The kids all know about it. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. I yeah wow i mean i wouldn't be surprised at, at your level like seriously jokes aside and like if you start a youtube channel and you start having like little drops of these videos be very casual i'm not talking about like super flashy just like oh here's this platform here's what i did here here's how my daily routine here's like i think it's gonna be like crazy popular because there is a great you know la a lack or huge gap of people who understand business but don't have to be super businessy and talking about art with nft with credibility as opposed to some you know crazy child like screaming at the audience yeah and if, and if it's not about monetizing you know there were i, I won't get the joke right because i'm not really in, well enough into the culture but in some of the various articles they're like oh this and that about crypto and where's the crypto that isn't about money so I just, you know, just to sort of pile onto face pointer to tag onto that, if the content was about expressing yourself or taking advantage of a, of a medium or growing as a person or interacting with younger people or whatever it is, mm -hmm. and it wasn't how to get 500 times return from your algo, I think it's a, it's more of a big blue ocean. <laughs> yeah, I know that's interesting. Mm -hmm. We like TikToks or something. Yeah. Those short things. Yeah, that's so exciting. This is so cool. Oh my God, yeah, thank and, you um, so just much. Just today, it was announced finally on social media that I'm going to be represented by a gallery, which is very exciting. And it's a real world gallery, but she specializes in digital artists, oh. K-Box Gallery. So that was my big event for the day. And what's oh. the gallery? It's, uh, I'll send you her link. 
Is it a, it's not an exclusive representation or is it? I haven't had to sign anything. Oh, so okay. I think it's, um, you know, project by project, but obviously, yeah. you know, if I had shows with her, then she would get 50% of everything that's sold. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it just- Hey, I'm your gallery lot. now. It helps a lot to have <laughs> I'm your gallery. official representation, especially for the traditional art world side. Yeah. There's a lot of things you can't participate in if it's not through a gallery, you know, art fairs and things. We're only oh, galleries. Oh, this is so apply. cool. We'll definitely share that out. Yeah, I love the use of the I love the use of the web space too, like how you can just take over the home page with something and wow. This is yeah, very she's cool. really awesome and the um you know the artist list is, is fantastic. So I'm also just like honored to be in that with the wow. other artists that are there. Congrats! Where are they located? Switzerland. It's in Zurich, but you know it's worldwide because it's digital. Oh, it does art fairs and things and comes to New York. I I think what what excites me the most, yeah, like when it comes to digital art, is like finally making art accessible. That even before the pandemic, how many people can say, "Let me go to the Met. Let me go to uh, MFA." because you need money, you need accommodation, you need time, many people don't have, and it's just crazy. And, uh, but this is finally, oh, are you, last, last question, this is like a goodbye then. No, that's, I, I totally agree with that. I think it opens yeah. up art creation and collecting and just viewing yeah. to huge new audiences, different demographics in this country and also worldwide. Yeah. Different audiences in that, you know, it's, to me, that's super fantastic. It's more visual thinking and visual creativity. And, um, you know, I, I'm intimidated by galleries in Chelsea and I've been in the art world forever and I collect artwork mm -hmm. and you go in and you often feel like people are kind of looking down at you and you don't know the prices. You have to ask for a price list. Yeah. And it's like a weird, bizarre kind of dynamic. It's kind of like going to the doctor, you know, where you have to like, yeah. take off your clothes and put on that gown that's open in the back. Like it makes you feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Foucault would have like a, a field day with it, I think. <laughs> um, the yeah, NFT world's cool. not like that. It's like you want to buy it. It's like Amazon. You, you click on it and buy it. And... Yeah. Oh, that's, that's such a great, that's such a great metaphor. Really, like art has been the art purchasing, art collection experience has been so, yeah, unpleasant. And uh, yeah, they won't uh, take a check. You have to wire money. Like, not everyone knows how to wire money. And... Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's weird. It's like a very weird um, world that I don't think has changed since, I don't know, like hundreds of years, maybe sort of like mm -hmm. you're in like a Renaissance court system and it's a, a lot of politics and yeah, luckiness and sort of like royalty level. And yeah, it's so very it's difficult so world to navigate. And finally, we can combine with music, with experiences, with storytelling, look at a painting, read something that you can actually see as opposed to on the little white plaque of some sort. And um, are you going to soon or have you already combined your art with like Oculus, that sort of like fully immersive 3D AR, VR experience? Is that on the map? I've done some AR stuff. Mm -hmm. I really like AR. I'm not a huge VR fan. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't like like the headset and having it on and having the rest of the world blocked out. Yeah. And I know it's getting better and better and I want an Oculus too, but I never use it. Like, I don't know, yeah. it just doesn't appeal to me, but that I'm sure it, it will get there. Yeah, yeah. What What are some of the augmented reality art experiences? Uh, how does that, um, how is that created for you and your artwork? I'm trying to imagine like, Without yeah, wearing that, well, how do we um, define AR? That that went with traditional artwork, or when you mm -hmm. looked at it, it would animate. Okay. So it's like sort of seeing a video in a frame on the wall, but by using your phone. Okay, gotcha. So when you don't have the AR on, it's just you know a drawing or a textile or mm -hmm. something, and then when you look at it through the AR app, you see it moving around. There are there are AR apps for art. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that you can make the AR thing, you know, and associate the image with, with the video or whatever you want to appear. Okay, very cool. I'm going to see, like, yeah, is yeah, it a mo AR mobile app for art? 
Yeah, there are a bunch. I mean, I haven't used them in a while, so. Art I visualizer. Yeah. Okay. Oh, very cool. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. Oh, it, our visual I, I see. Okay. But these are all Android ones. Huh? Yeah. I was, I was thinking about like, will it, like, it's called the will it fit? Like you buy artworks on, like on Amazon or somewhere that like you can actually place it and you point somewhere on your yeah, wall. Yeah, some people have that where and then you can see it like a sculpture in your room yeah. or something. Yeah, gotcha. So that's like what we mean. Okay, The cool. lists I'm looking at are like people that already made something in an app. But there are apps for artists to mm -hmm. make AR things. Cool. Yeah, you know, Apple's AR toolkit has been really great and they keep making it better and better. Apple has an AR toolkit? <laughs> <laughs> they do. Uh -huh. And it's really nice. And you can like snap AR objects onto any horizontal surface. And oh, there's wow. a lot of stuff built into it that's really great. Wow, AR creation. Yeah, tool. like a development, you know, kit. Right. Oh, wow. This is very cool. Like different services, different shapes, and you can. Awesome. Awesome. All right. I'm going to stop asking questions. Uh, That's right. I'm trying to find like, what's. Um... All right. Here, I'm going to send you another link. This is cool. I, I don't know if you can download this and make your own art, but they've done some cool. Um, books and things where you look at them mm -hmm. and then you see stuff like pop out of the pages like AR pop up. Oh, iJack app. Yeah. The one, the app that I used was by HP and they discontinued it. Wow. So I don't this is... know right now like what the, what the popular things are because I haven't done it for a while. Wow. Here's some. So, Here, this I... seems like a good list. So the resources are awesome. We're definitely going to list them. And then we'll, to make it even more comfortable, we'll take the answer offline rather than rushing now. But as a teaser for the people watching, if you have friends, the friends might be notable or somebody that nobody's heard of that you feel they're really sh their story should be shared, or their perspective should be shared. I feel like we're, you know, Faye's going to move forward both with Faye's world and with Sean yeah. Lee. Oh, I definitely yeah. have suggestions for you. Yeah, I would love to hear those. Artists who are really taking advantage of the platform and new combinations of digital and physical and I would definitely send you something. yeah we'd love to show them off and, and yeah. keep the conversation yeah. going oh well you can like share this video and then include all the links and with a description of what they mean right like it's not just a yeah and your your ga the gallery Kate's gallery as well as like oh not night cafe like what is yeah, it with a little really blurb cool. it's like this blog post becomes like a like a resource hub um for exploration yeah. if you want to have some instant fun with ai go to night cafe and do the text to image text to you image yeah, yeah yeah you type in a phrase and it makes a picture what well, yep it seems it's like the most magical and fun thing oh, gotta try and this. anyone can do it so it's uh, i think a whole like cool entry point for people into the art world that they don't have to go to art school and learn how to draw or something like, there's all these new tools that allow people to be creative and make imagery wow i I, I just typed in uh, Anne Spalter is awesome. So <laughs> colorful concept art. It, um, it accesses a big research uh, database of images called ImageNet that's tagged. Mm -hmm. So it's best with, you know, nouns and things that someone might tag an image with. Mm -hmm. Like it probably doesn't know who I am. Oh, interesting. Oh my goodness. That's like sophisticated. But if you put in like awesome penguins uh -huh. on an iceberg, Mm -hmm. having a party you know then it's going to give you something wow so it says like add multi uh modifiers oh i yeah, don't have to i actually already like did that realistic or oh wow so run run time oh we have to buy credits right yeah they're really cheap though you, oh you get five you get five for free or something ah oh, gotcha but they're wow. expensive because it this uses, so they have to pay, you know, Amazon Cloud or whoever they use. Yeah, I can't wait to play it. with this. Well, that would be an epic. But it's really fun. It's very addictive. 